Hi guys, welcome back to the Oil Painting Channel. Today I'm going to be doing an oil painting of an elephant and her calf, so let's roll that intro. Hi guys, welcome back. As I said at the start, we're going to be doing a painting of an elephant and her calf, and they are located at a waterhole called New Brownie in Etosha, Namibia. I was there a few years ago now, and I've done several trips into the place. This was actually part of a five-week trip doing all the watering holes uh, on the circuit, and had a great time and saw so many wonderful things. Anyway, I thought I would do this painting for you now it's going to be in all honesty a staged work because i can't do a whole painting like this in a very small space of time so what i'm going to do is i'm going to break this whole painting down i'm going to do the whole thing and i'm going to film the whole thing we're going to break it down into bite-sized chunks so that you can see it at a sort of regular intervals and follow the series and i hope you're going to get something from all that so without further ado Let's go for the first part and let's get the block in done. Alrighty, welcome back. First things first with this elephant. I have taken the drawing and I have transferred it to a prepared canvas. Now the canvas is actually a natural canvas panel which you can buy from many sources. Uh, I think I got this one from a company called Great Art where they sometimes have offers on this. Now apart from the paints that all the details are below, I'm using Liquin Original which I'm showing you here. Now it's a great way of uh, adding to your paint, allowing it to move more readily but also allowing it to dry rather quickly. I'm using some Rosemary & Company brushes, a selection of flats, long flax, long filberts and some smaller ones like a rigger and that will also be used later on in the painting. First and foremost though I am looking at doing all the darks as best as I can. Now what I've got to say about this whole process, painting any wildlife for me personally is not a five minute job. It takes an inordinate amount of hours to create the paintings that I do. Small or large it really doesn't matter, it's just an extension of time the larger they become. So the first part of any painting for me of wildlife is to block it in. I want to uh, take the canvas away, whether it's a toned canvas like this natural canvas, or indeed if it's a white surface with a drawing on. I want to eradicate that and therefore it will not affect how I perceive my colour. But what I'm doing, by doing a block in, I am setting up the stage for the next uh, pass. The thing is that this will be ready to dry or be dry by the morning so I can then go straight back into the painting if I wish to. Now I'm not doing that because I'm obviously doing this as a video film for you guys to enjoy and to watch. So this will be done in a certain steps over a series of weeks. So I can then allow this to dry thoroughly and then I can move on with the next stage. But a block in is quite simply getting rid of all of that background, all of that uh, canvas color, but it's setting up the actual color series of colors for the next stage. So having got rid of everything, I'm looking primarily at warm colors and cool colors. And by doing that, I can then put my shadow tones in, my highlight tones in, those warm areas on the elephant, those wet areas on the elephant, the dry areas, the cool areas, the blues, the oranges, the reds. Every brush stroke that I'm looking at here is an amalgam of many color grays because there's no pure blues there. There's no pure oranges or reds there. They are dirty versions. That's probably the truest blue color that I put in, which was a bit of phthalo blue and white, just to give that lovely light accent on the very top. The thing about these elephants is they are from Namibia. This is from um, Etosha, and the elephants have very much shorter tusks, even the cows, and the bulls are even more noticeable because of that. And so they don't have a long tusk. 
but they also have very pale, very white skin because the mud they use to douse themselves off and keep cool and keep the bugs out of their skin is predominantly a very white mud and it, it sort of it just dries like white powder upon them so sometimes when you see them come out of the atosha pan at the end of the day for a drink they just look like ghosts and one of these days i have a painting in mind with some old boys and it will be called the ghosts of atosha I've been wanting to paint that for about 10 or 12 years or even more than that. I'm putting some series of light tones on now. And as I say, they I'm looking at the predominance of color. So when you look at the actual photograph, you can see that parts of the head is very, very pale, very, very white. And it will not need to go dark to start with. I can go straight in with that color almost from the get go, knowing that I don't have to do too much in terms of darkening it later on down the road and that color goes to a little paler blue as it comes down the trunk and right at the bottom there i'm actually adding some warm colors back into that blue they are subdued and what i was trying to say to you earlier that all the colors on my palette are quite simply there as to mix up and make amalgams so none of them are pure they are all a whole raft of different grays now that gray can be light and it can be dark it can be very pale blue colors it can be really cool or it can be very very warm more on the orange red side but because they each of those mixes have um, a series of a yellow and a red and a blue in them they are a gray because they are mixtures they are tertiary colors they are not secondaries and not primaries and because of that the relationships are linked together even the blue and the orange have links because they have some of the same blue some of the same yellow some of the same reds into each of those mixes so when you look at the palette you can see that i'm making mixes and i'm pulling little bits of color into other colors i'm not using one color to mix the whole lot out because i'm going to go back in and use some of those colors further on in this painting so i don't want to destroy them i want them there so i can pop back into them and use them further on and it really is a good tip you make little puddles and they sort of slowly creep across your palette but you don't destroy anything totally just putting the eyes in now a dark mix of umber and uh, ultramarine blue one of the best darks you can make another one is alizarin and thalo green makes a different type of um, color but it is well worth considering using that too at different times so the reason I'm using the darks now are all those very, very deep shadowy areas between the ears and the head, the eyes down the tear ducts, all those areas, the little creases, those deeper, more uh, inaccessible areas for light to fall into. Those are the areas that I'm now darkening off. And already you can see that there are forms with the elephant or within the elephant coming on i'm now starting to look at little areas softening areas softening some of the transitions between those darks and the darkers or the lighter parts i'm now looking at the baby elephant and i'm using pretty much the same set of colors there in fact is only a little bit of light on the hind quarters of the baby and the reason that the mother is leaning forward and pressing her trunk very affectionately into the baby elephant is because the elephant was walking forwards he had quite a little spirit i've got to say we watched him for about an hour uh, before they we saw him arrive with the family group and after they had all drunk and he had had his fill they all then left but he was adventurous from the get-go and what mum was trying to do was to keep him in her shadow and that's why there is only a very tiny amount of light on his hind quarters because she he was pull, he was walking forward and she was pulling him back and keeping him in the shade very sensible mother it is extremely hot at this time of day this was quite late morning so the sun was very very harsh and very very over the top we were coming back in to get some refreshments having been out all morning photographing and sketching and we were tired we had had enough we needed a break uh, but when we come past this water hole which is just outside of camp we suddenly saw this herd walking towards the hole we thought 
we just can't miss this it's just too good so we we stayed around for a lot longer than we dare but it was so worth it they provided such entertainment such photographic opportunities that uh, it would have been crazy to have driven past and ignored them but pretty much i've blocked in the whole of these elephants now i've used the same series of blues and oranges or warms and cools this is a whole painting as you'll see in pure complementary color and that's all i've done now i'm looking at the background now you'll see in the photograph the sky and the horizon are really high up on the elephant i didn't like that i wanted to bring that down not too far down because it would have altered the perspective but a little way down and i wanted to do that so that we are prepped ready for the next time and i don't think the change of horizon line really has affected it i was measuring here got to get it level make sure it's in the right place and then go for it and then the series of colors that i'm using are just subtle blues to give me that background color and later on in the painting if i don't feel that that's dark enough or rich enough i can go over it it's not a big deal what i am doing though is being very careful how i cut around the shape of the elephant it would be very easy to be clumsy and lose a little bit of your drawing and wreck it and then you'll you'll not see it and it'll be too late i'm coming in now with a distance green blue i used a little bit of yellow uh, lemon yellow some of the uh, darker greens and um, blues just to give me that uh, cool darkish green of the grasses on the dunes further out on the uh, Etosha pan and also some sort of variations of middle ground coming all the way down to the foreground but still I'm using warms and cools now I will say once this is dry the next video that you're going to see is the next pass every successive pass that you make on a painting doing it like this is getting a lot longer to do but with less information if that makes any sense because you're going to start putting in more detail you're going to start refining some of these big bold color statements that you've made and you're going to start making smaller statements but by doing that you have to be more considered you take more time and therefore it takes longer and each successive pass that you do becomes even more that way so you're going to see this over several films i do hope you're going to stay tuned and uh, enjoy all of them i will bring them all to you over a series of weeks and that they can build into a very concise video but don't forget please that the full length of this and all the others will be on a membership channel in due course and i will put those together and i will invite those of you who are interested to become members on my website and enjoy the full length version of this and many 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 other oils in the future so with that said i look forward to your company in the very next video and we start putting in some more detail on this elephant mother and calf good luck take care catch you all soon bye bye so i do hope that if you've enjoyed this uh that you will uh give it a thumbs up and also if you would uh, become a subscriber if you're not that really does help me grow and reach more people and also add comments below i'm always eager to uh, receive those and i'll always answer them so until my next video on this painting take care have fun happy painting catch you all very very soon bye bye hi guys welcome back to the painting channel Hi guys, welcome back to the painting. No, it's not that. Hi guys, welcome back to the oil painting channel. <laughs> I said that wrong. Hi everybody, welcome back to the oil painting channel. Today I want to make a start on a new painting of a elephant and its calf. An elephant of its calf. A elephant. B elephant. C elephant. Ooh, okay, start again. Hi everybody, welcome back to the oil painting channel. No. Hi everybody, as I said at the start, it is an oil painting. Well, of course it is, because it's an oil painting channel. Hi everybody.
Hi everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, it is an oil painting. No, we know it's an oil painting. Because it's an oil channel. Hi everyone, welcome back. As I said at the start, it is a painting about an elephant and her calf. And they are located at a water hole called New Brownie in Etosha in Namibia. I nearly said that wrong. Namibia. I've been there a few times and this was one long five week trek that we did together oh no why do they need that you don't need all of that i know when i was there you don't need to know when i was there i was there long time ago now 